everyone to These Aren't the Nerds You're Looking For, uh, episode 36. This is Clone Wars episode 31, Children of the Fert Force. <laughs> Kevin Horde here. Lorenzo Fon sitting over here. Children of the First. Children of the First. Yeah, yeah. The First. What is that? Like your Minnesotan accent? I don't. <laughs> I don't even know. I got, yep. Verse. I got nothing else beyond that. Of the Force. Uh, it's like a Kermit this is accent, maybe? <laughs> yeah, it's getting there. It's yeah. Children of the Force. Yeah. 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 The Force. <laughs> so it just wades in and out between being Lucas and kermit Yes. All right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. So this I is uh, Season 2, Episode 3. Yep. And the production number on this is uh, Season 2, Episode 3. So how about that? This one actually matches up. Is this the first one that actually matches up i feel like we have never seen one actually match up before i, I was thinking the same thing <laughs> yeah. uh no it's the second one yeah. what's the first one uh clone cadets season three episode one ah okay but from a production standpoint this is the first one to be released and actually match yes yeah. <laughs> from a production standpoint, yes. Yeah, from a production timeline. Yeah. But yeah, okay. Yeah, originally released on October 9th of 2009 to mm-hmm. uh, 2.03 million viewers. Again, higher than the premiere, which I think is odd. I mean, I have, I have nothing beyond that, just that it's weird. Because usually... In my head, you'll get like a spike of people who join in for the premiere, and then kind of just you get drop offs from there, falling out, you know, scheduling conflicts, whatever, right. in terms of like people's lives catch up with them. Right. You know, especially in October when children are in school and they have school stuff to worry about or whatever, you know, sports things, whatever high schooler and younger do. Yeah, the only thing that I can think is that, um, the the week prior we had the first two episodes of season two and uh cad bane was introduced and maybe that sparked some people's interest and they wanted to see how this how this thing turns out yeah so could be or who knows (laughs) yeah so speaking of last week's episode what do we have going on leading into this episode Ah, that's funny because I was going to ask you the same thing. So, uh, <laughs> let's start with the newsreel. Yeah, yeah. Is there any other information we need to get out of the way? This one's directed by directed by Brian Callan O'Connell, uh, written by Henry Gilroy and Wendy Miracle. Yeah, I mean, uh, the fortune cookie is the first step to correcting a mistake. Is patience? Yes, it is. Yeah. So I'm going to ask you this time. I got Obi Wan Kenobi. You- Straight up. Oh, good one. Good one. Okay. Good Obi-Wan. I I will agree with that. I also got, I mean, it's not in his vernacular, but it just felt like something Yoda would also dole out as advice to people. Okay. Especially like but, Luke in uh, Empire. Yes. Yeah. It's just something I really feel like he would just start lobbing at people who were just trying to rush through things. Is it weird that I consider like original trilogy Yoda, like old Yoda and prequel trilogy Yoda, like young Yoda, even though he's like 870 in the prequels. Yes. Cuz then like on his time frame he's not really different. Yeah. Um I mean I I don't disagree with you only because from an outsider perspective the puppet from Empire and Return of the Jedi, and especially that fucking puppet from Episode One, are so different in appearance, and okay. even texture, and even just movement and feeling, you know. Yeah. The- and then just all of it, and then leading into the CGI Yoda of uh, Attack of the Clones and return or revenge of the the sith Mm -hmm. yoda is one of those characters that i personally kind of have to keep reminding myself that this is one consistent character despite it's it's like one of those things where it's like 
Frank Oz plays him the whole time throughout the movies, mm-hmm. but psychologically, it's an actor change, right? Okay. Like, psychologically speaking, they swapped out the actors, and I just got to accept that, you know, that's Rhodey, <laughs> right? Like, uh, So, so like, Yoda should have yeah. walked in and be, been like, mm, me it is, deal with it, you must. Yes, completely. That's I needed that one line to just be like, yeah, I guess that CG guy guy is still Yoda, even though he looks completely different from episode one, the previous movie, and completely different than every other time we've fucking seen him as a Muppet, you know? So do you prefer the digital Yoda in episode one? Didn't they do that for, like, the DVD or something? Or the Blu-ray? It it helps. It helps. I... I <coughs> As much as I'm against all those changes, I'm not changing uh, Puppet Yoda in Episode 1 to CGI Yoda to match the other two Yodas helped a little bit, only because that puppet was so bad. Like, that puppet was terrible. Um, It looked more like a Muppet than a puppet. And like like a sad puppet, though. You know what I mean? Like, it just, again, there, there was something about... It, like the color was off. It was too shiny, you know. It it looked like a toy rather than like a translucent skinned hum like uh, not human but like living creature sort of thing. You never know. Maybe human. I mean, I've never seen yeah. a nine hundred year old. Yeah, he was just that one with the forest that he just kept on held going. on and kept on going. So, I yeah, uh, my my only problem is even though that they used Empire as the reference for the CGI model for Attack of the Clone, like, he still looks off. I don't know what it is. Like, he just, it doesn't match. Like, the, I I know it's Yoda, but, like, the, the proportions and the facial features still look off compared to Empire Yoda. And this is where I became very impressed with Last Jedi. Spoilers, Yoda. <laughs> well, they used a puppet. Um, well, number one, they used a puppet, but the fact that they really studied the fuck out of that Empire puppet, mm-hmm. got the proportions right, got the the texture right, got the movement right, mm-hmm. you know, uh, be- because having seen it done in episode one, I do not know why there was not, like, I'm, I'm not saying there wasn't care put into episode one Yoda, surely there was, mm-hmm. knowing that you're recreating Yoda, but it just didn't work out in that one. Right. Yeah. So. But hey, we got Yaddle out of the deal. <laughs> when what? Yaddle. Oh, boy. Yeah, the two of them together. Just. Yeah, like, I feel like if they just didn't worry about Yaddle and just focused on making one good Yoda. Well, then. Uh, I will interject because what I've heard is that Yaddle is in reality a test Yoda puppet that they made. Nope. Yeah. That they weren't entirely pleased with, and they put a wig no on. No shit. <laughs> no fucking shit. What they should have just done is burn that motherfucker to the ground and start it anew. Melt it down and try again. Can, um, you, can you melt down foam? Is that the way it works? I don't know. I don't, it just needed to be burned and killed and put out, put it, put out of its misery. That's, is what needed to be done. That's that's a so. that's a very strong opinion there. Oh, Yaddle is terrible. So, again, this is where, uh, you know, opinions as they may be for Last Jedi, that moment in theaters when Yoda was revealed, I was super excited. And oh, it was um, it was fucking incredible. There's no. Yeah. I mean, I don't I don't know how anybody could d- dispute that. It was. Yeah. It was fucking incredible. And the fact that. That it made it all the way to, like, not even, I well, I guess the, you know, red carpet premiere or whatever, or like the world premiere, but I had no idea. I think I had heard that uh, Frank Oz was at the premiere, right? And I was like, yeah. oh, well, that's, you know, how quaint. But That's nice. Yeah, but he's just going to be invited to all right. these things anyway. Because he's, Star, right? he's so. Star Wars family, right? Yeah, exactly. So I agree, like. When I I had no idea that Yoda would be in it. Um, if there were rumors, I completely pushed them out. I'm one that 
I will listen to fan theory, fan speculation, you know, of upcoming movies. But when it comes to rumors or spoilers, I am very adamant about avoiding them completely. Uh, but yeah, so I, um, yeah, I, I I enjoyed that Yoda puppet and the fact that it had articulated legs. <laughs> oh, I didn't notice that. Yeah, because uh, when Luke freaks the give it another watch luke freaks the fuck out about the sacred jedi text mm-hmm. and yoda uh you get a full body shot of yoda sitting on a log and as he's laughing at in luke's face he's like doing about, this with his feet yeah his feet pitter patter a little bit and you see his <laughs> knees going back and forth yeah that shit is uh, that's the magic to me right um it's like Kermit riding the bicycle all over again for me. Even though I now know how that was done, and it's so stupid simple, but it's still just one of those, like... They attach the feet to the pedals and then just automate the pedals? No, it's just a marionette. The whole fucking thing is just on strings. Hmm. Yeah, like, that's all it is. It's just one of those classic old puppets that, you know, you hold from above and, like, sound of music, you know? <laughs> like, right. Puppet show thing. That's all it is. That's all it fucking is. Like the actors um, in The Clone Wars? Marionettes? Basically, yeah, <laughs> yes, just all marionettes, all woodcut marionettes. So I, I, you have convinced me, and I will change my opinion. We're going with Yoda here. <laughs> uh, that wasn't meant to convince. That was just like a, I don't see Yoda as a singular character, actor. <laughs> so, but anyways, yes, I, I see it coming from either Obi or Yoda. So, what do we got in the newsreel this time, sir? That, our our newsreel is a straight up recap of uh, the last episode. So, yes, it is. at the end of Cargo of Doom, we saw a clone trooper um, kill Cad Bane, which is very sad yep. and unfortunate. And uh, shot in the face. Yep. So the narrator just tells us that. Uh, it's kind of got like one blurb from from each episode because it starts with Anakin used this idea of uh, ATTEs through space to get onto the ship, and then they went in and they they tried to catch Bane, but mm-hmm. he got killed by a clone trooper, and uh, they had to escape, and the and holocron, holocron was yeah. blowed up. Yep. And uh, the Holocron got dead, and then they fly back to uh, the Anakin's... The Resolute? Yeah. I, was, I can never remember his good guy, Star Destroyer name. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. It's because I I have to write it down every time, too. Every time I reference Wikipedia as to what their Star mm-hmm. Destroyer battleship is. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I Every episode, I forget that. So the first, even though we talk about it every other episode, so. I know I and it just never clicks into my brain because I don't think that I've written down resolute in my notes once, ever. Yeah, uh, and and they barely ever say it too. That's the other problem. They never they never really refer to it by name. Mm-hmm. You know, they just fly back to a ship and there they are, mm-hmm. and they just happen to know which ship is theirs and which one they're going to instead of whatever. You know. So. Yeah. So I never even think about it, but. Uh, yeah. The the first official scene of this uh, of this episode, Children of the First, uh, is the last scene of Cargo of Doom, right? Mm-hmm. Except for basically, except for it's not. Yeah, it, like we really do pick up uh, immediately after they're still on the same. Well, what I'm saying is, like, at the end of at the end of Cargo of Doom, you see their sheathed uh fly back to the Resolute. Oh, that's right. You are you right. You see I the sheathed come out. through the force field. Yes. Land in the in the cargo bay. Yeah. Uh, the, There's a conversation. The that back end drops. Yalaren. Yeah. Anakin and Ahsoka get off and talk to Yalaren. Mm-hmm. At the beginning of this episode. You see the sheathapede flying, flying back in, back to the resolute. You see it go through the the force field. You see it land in the cargo bay. You see mm-hmm. the door open. This it's not it's not the same. No, not at all. So I played these two side by side. 
Uh -huh. And you would think that they would just recycle the footage so they didn't have to yeah. reanimate all this. Like Back to the Future style? Right. Almost. But they don't match. Like, they don't mesh. Uh, there's different yeah. number of clone troopers in different spots. There's different boxes in different areas. Uh, mm -hmm. The timing of the landing is different where in, in Cargo of Doom, like, the landing gear come out and it's like landing gear on fold. Hover for half a second, drop down to the floor. In Children of the Force, or Children of the First, uh, landing gear come out, hover for a second and a half, two seconds, slowly drop to the floor, and then the clone troopers that stay... I, th I think the same number of clone troopers stay on the Sheathapede, because there's mm -hmm. like Rex and two other guys. Um, and this clone trooper that killed Cad Bane slowly walks off in Cargo of Doom. He just kind of hangs out. And uh, while Anakin and Ahsoka are talking to Yalaren. Yeah. In Children of the Force, it just it shows him walk off, and then he kind of slowly exits stage right. Mm -hmm. R2-D2 kind of rolls past him. R2 was not in the shot in Cargo of Doom. Uh Anakin and Ahsoka are not talking to Yalaren. They're talking to just another random clone. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, there's there's two groups of clones that we see during this landing sequence. On the left-hand side of the screen in Cargo, I think it's there's like four. In Children, it's just like two of them. And then I think in Cargo, there's like two on the right-hand side, like walking off the side of the screen, where in children there's only one and then during the Anakin Ahsoka conversation like there's two stacks of boxes on either side uh, in children but not in cargo so it looks the same and I honestly I, I really just don't understand why they didn't use the previous footage that they already had yeah so because it's that's confusing then because then within its own narrative, I and I'm embarrassed I didn't even catch it because I kind of just sat down to watch this episode and then just like barreled on with it, you know, because it's weird. Like the one week we've had between watching these episodes and recording our own show, you know, it was enough time to pass for me to just be like, to not catch that at all. Um, so it's weird that there's a continuity issue within itself. And it's almost like, like uh, if this were a live action thing, mm -hmm. it would be as though, you know, it was like take one, take two. Yeah. And, you know, some extras just like weren't in the right spot or something like that. Like shit like yeah. this happens. But when when it's a digitally produced animated show yeah there, you there was some role of right this is everything it's deliberate changes and i'm i don't understand why yeah because our i mean i guess do we just assume that he still ends up talking to yalaren at some point well he totally we just don't see it he, he totally does because later uh very shortly after this i i took a uh screen capture of or I took a picture of the screens that I just sent over to you so you can see mm -hmm. the side-by-side -side comparison, um, which I will probably post on, on Twitter when this episode drops here. Mm -hmm. um, you also get to see my bookshelves in the background, so there's <laughs> that. But, um, yeah, let's just move forward, and then we'll be presented presented with proof that there was a conversation with you, Lauren. Yeah. Uh, so let's move on. What happens next after... I have another theory what? real quick. Yeah, go ahead. This is... Uh, what if we are viewing this through the eyes of someone retelling the story? So Anakin retells the story and he's like, okay, the fucking... Like, we got back, we landed real fucking fast, we dropped the gate, we run off, we talked to you, Lauren. And Ahsoka tells the story and she's like, okay, we got back and... You know, it's nice soft landing. Everything's good. And I think there was a couple of clone troopers over there. And then I saw this one guy, like, wandering off. And R2 was over there. I noticed R2. I, I would only buy that if, like, 
it, it's one thing to change perspective in the same scene, mm-hmm. but then like I would still need to see Yularen like in the background of this scene at the beginning of this episode versus the ending of the last episode. If that makes sense, yeah, right. It totally I mean, does. It, it, it's it's one of those things where uh, I'm trying to think of a good movie that or. Uh, this is a really, really deep pull, but have you ever seen or heard of the movie um, The Disappearance of Eleanor Rigby? No. Okay. But this I is like uh, the song, Eleanor Rigby. The song, yes. So this, the title is taking from the song. Clearly it has nothing to do with the song at all. But well, it's a movie starring um, Jessica Chastain and James McAvoy. And it's actually two movies that take place at the same time. Like Saw 3 and Saw 4? <laughs> I guess, but I never saw anything past Saw 2. So <laughs> You need to see Saw. I just, yes. <laughs> just I need to jump on that seesaw. Go down um, go down to the park, jump on the seesaw, <laughs> yeah. enjoy yourself for a while, find yourself a friend of equal height and weight. And then the, the jigsaw. For the other side. Killer, and doll, then come out. When, when you're done enjoying <laughs> the park, go home and... Uh, binge some saw saw three and four you said i think it's three and four okay yeah i knew some of them overlapped but um two of them literally take place at the exact same time yeah but uh this is what happens between disappearance of eleanor rigby and uh the two versions are called him and her so it's about like their relationship so then like in the him version you get like literally just his one side and is it is there actually two movies? They are two separate movies. Okay. That each have their own opening credits, ending credits, all that. They share scenes and then even some of those scenes you get like different shots from like some shots will be the same and then other shots will have different perspective to some degree, you know, like or the editing will be more focused on her point of view mm-hmm. versus his point of view. Um, that is wicked so then, smart. Yeah. And what's interesting is, like, there isn't one that you're supposed to watch first. You just kind of pick one. Can you play them at the same time? No, because they do not play in the same uh, – At they do, they do not proceed time at the same time, uh, if that makes sense. So for him, you know, there's a lot of post-whatever disappearance is happening – and with her, there's a lot of there's there's still a lot of post stuff, but it jumps back and forth in time as to what is leading her to make that decision to disappear. So I need somebody on the internet to uh, cut these things on like a split screen, and <laughs> when there is a time dilation between the two, I guess one of them is just blank blackout for that period now, of time. Here is the annoying thing to help you out. There is one just called Them because movie theaters did not want to play both at the same time because they thought it would confuse audiences. So So there's three cuts in the movie? There are three cuts in the movie. The Them version is just a plain Jane normal version of this story that I don't think helps anybody. I, I consider it like the the movie that the director never really wanted to make. Hmm. But it, it does kind of arrange most things. There's a lot of scenes that do drop from both movies to make a single two hour movie. So then you're taking essentially four hours of footage and cutting it in half. Uh huh. Yeah. So it's the Topher Grace cut is what you're saying. Yes. Yeah. It's the, it's the Topher Grace cut of these two movies. Okay. Anyways, do you, th- do you think th- I need to explain that reference? I would hope not. To our audience, but you know, if you need to explain, just Topher Grace. There's an official name, or I mean, not official name, but there is a name for that cut, right? And I don't remember what it's called. Yeah, I was hoping that you did. I don't, not off the top of my head. Like, I know, like, Machete Order, that's the one I always remember. Yeah. Like, the fan names that float around. But, anyways, that's a long way of saying what I liked about those two movies is that they do not contradict each other in the way we are discussing right here. Right. So you will see things from one perspective and then I the order I watched it in was him and then her. So there are 
that was an interesting order because there's a he does not understand the mystery. Mm-hmm. She does. So then you do get a lot of backfill when watching that order. I am I, I can't go back, but I am curious as to how I would have felt seeing his perspective afterwards because I think watching his perspective first, you know, and then getting that backfill. But but anyways, this is a long way of describing that a fucking live action director can handle continuity <laughs> across two solid movies, you know? Yeah, I was I was um to pull us back to Clone yes. Wars. I was more thinking of the difference in eyewitness testimony. See, I there's nothing else about these episodes. Like I I'm not against I, single episodes doing this. I will disagree with you. Uh-huh. Because each episode starts with a newsreel as though the following story is being retold uh, with an announcer. Like, the announcer's like, hey, this is what happened. And then somebody tells the story of whatever's going on. And I knew you are going to bring that up. But again, it, there's just... Everything else after the fact um, doesn't sell that to me, if that makes sense. It, t- it totally makes sense. I am yeah. I'm only arguing these points because uh, of the differences we witnessed, and I'm saying, yes. hey, maybe this could be... For, like that's the only justification. I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't can, think there is a justification. I don't think there yeah. is an explanation. I think maybe somebody just wanted to tweak some stuff or... A different Didn't design team was put on this. I have no idea. Yeah, but yeah. Um, we're pretty deep into the shit, and we're at the at the newsreel. Literally the opening scene. Uh, so let's let's move forward. And what do we got happening? Uh, so after or at the end of this uh, scene discrepancy, the clones that are still on the sheath of peed call over Anakin, and they're like, "Hey, General, you need to see this. Come here." And then Ahsoka follows uh, the Cad Bane murder, right? Yes. What And what they show Anakin on the ship is like some green dots of spooge on the floor, uh, yep. which is blood, apparently. Mm-hmm. And uh, they're like... And the clones are very perceptive, and they're like, hey. They're like, hey, that's blood, but it ain't clone blood. Yeah. Uh, like we all bleed the same way because we're clones. Right. So we cut to, <laughs> we cut to Ahsoka... Talking to Cad Bane murder, still C- mask clone. Yeah, CBM, uh, and yeah. Uh, she's like, "Hey, trooper, you're injured. Like, uh, go to the hospital or med bay or whatever." Yeah, and she stops him, and then she looks at—I don't know—it's weird. She looks at his arm or something, and then she's like, "Hey, you're not a clone." Uh, I don't know what she's seen because he's got armor on. Yeah, I was kind of confused by that too or how she was alerted so Um, anakin comes running out and he's like no ahsoka something i don't know he tries to warn her and uh this this clone trooper straight fucking knees ahsoka (laughs) right in the chest chest. like (laughs) just right hard and fucking drops her to the ground takes off fights some other clone troopers and hops in a ship anakin is chasing after him and does a pretty damn good job of catching up and uh, trying trying to fight this dude that seems to be going AWOL or stealing a ship or something. And Anakin knocks him in the side of the side of the head. Off comes the helmet. It's Cad Bane. Yep. So I don't have to be sad anymore because I was sad when Cad Bane died. But Cad's back. Now he's back. He regenerated in a, a clone trooper body, which is amazing. <laughs> um. How. I know that you saw this coming. Oh, yeah. How do you feel about it? I think it's fine. I mean, he's a good character, and it it, it keeps the arc alive in a, a very good way, I would say. you know. I think it's it awesome. Wasn't a, yeah. The, the complaint that I would have about it is uh, that Cad Bane's character design, he's got, like, these tubes coming out of his cheeks or something. Mm-hmm. They go to like a rebreather or something. I'm not really something. sure. Yeah. But when he doesn't have his helmet on, I feel like he should have some like holes in his cheeks. 
I don't disagree. I was looking forward to seeing what he looks like when not attached to tubular. Yeah. Wear, I guess. <laughs> um, and he just yet, he just kind of looks like a a blue bald alien, and that's it. Yeah, like a very like a very thin faced like almost like Fred Astaire like. Right. You know, long face sort of thing. Right. Um, I and to be fair too, you know, um, I think the last episode I had many problems with, but what I will revisit and say was well done as how I'm, I'm going to try and word this carefully, but like if I were a child watching this, I think that would have been a fun, uh, th- they handled it as well as they could without straight up lying to an audience. Yeah. If that makes sense. I think it was well like done. I, yeah. Like I still saw it coming, but it, I think it, you know, in the flash of the moment, I think it was really well done. And the reveal here was, I think also well done. Um, the fact that they see blood, you know, mm-hmm. um, and then see that something's up, right? I think, so I, I yeah, think, I think it progresses yeah. logically. Like, uh, I honestly would have would have liked to see a little bit more more time in between, because uh, if you're playing these back to back, it's like two minutes. Like, oh, mm-hmm. fucking Cat Bane's dead. Like, come on, Trooper, you sound a little funny. We'll land twice and do different things in the landing bay, <laughs> and then, uh, you know, one of the clone troopers will wander off and. Boom, we find out that it's Cad Bane. Like, it happens yeah. real quick, snappy, snappy, back to back to back to back. Yeah. Uh, in a show that is edited down to 22, 23 minutes, it's probably necessary. I don't think there, I don't know that there's enough that could have happened that we could have squeezed an entire episode in between the death yeah. and the and the reveal. Uh, I don't think, I mean, as, yeah, especially with the way things are being played out, like, he had to have been caught pretty quickly. Like his time was very limited. Yeah. Unless this right. clone trooper just kind of disappears and then they're like, Hey, where's uh, where's Nate? Mm-hmm. Like where'd Nate go? We want to congratulate yeah. him for killing Cad Bane. And then just later you just find out a different way. Um, and I'm, I, I don't want to um, just, just one more preface. I always try and judge the show that's been given to us, but yep. I've I'm always been I, I've been surprised uh, by the one time we did have or uh, the one time we had a major cliffhanger that never went anywhere. The next episode, um, the episode in which uh, Kevin was a guest, what was okay. it the one Lair where Grievous? Is that the one where Anakin and Obi Wan like take the drink of the thing and the or they do the drink swaparoo, and then the next fucking episode they're in jail because they got drunk or something like that. That was uh, the Rebels, Rebels guys, Peter and Mike. Yes. I knew there was a guest involved. Duke, but Duke who captured. Duke who captured. So that was the so, week after Kevin was on. Yes. So every now and then the show will try and, like, do, like, a cliffhanger mm-hmm. and then fucking lose it mm-hmm. by the next one, which is annoying for many reasons. I'm kind of surprised that they wrapped up the last episode instead of kind of having pushing everything a little bit forward Mm -hmm. as to what you suggest and maybe having the reveal at the end of the last episode Mm -hmm. you know like i'm kind of amazed that that in the last episode they really didn't give too many hints at all yeah right um and then that they do I, i you know that they just kick into it in this one rather than kind of melding that a little bit better uh, continuity issues aside yeah um but yeah, i'm amazed the show doesn't lean more on on cliffhangers you know i'm not against that i do like a show that knows when to close shit down yeah you know? right but uh but some the, the shows that are good at cliffhangers like will close a story and then give you something else right you know little, not every show has to do that bit. but yeah, not not every show has to do that, but um, you know, I, for for a show where you know, like you're, generally speaking, you know, like hey, you have a full season order, you know, mm-hmm. and we have this, as of right now, three episode arc, mm-hmm. you know? like you know, we we have a longer arc going, you know, like you can you can seed some stuff in, 
previous episodes to kind of directly tie into the next one per se right correct anyways it was just a stray observation i had hey you're all good man yeah all right what do we got so So, anakin after anakin knocks his helmet off Mm -hmm. uh bane is barreling ass for the the blue shield of death and uh i think so far in this episode i really like the way our shields are working I have Mm -hmm. bitched about them in the past, and uh, also in the past I've brought up how the the main center channel of all these individual docking bays, the landing platform, whatever you want to call it, when the good guy Star Destroyer opens its uh, quarter mile long top mount garage doors, right? It's Uh just open to space. Yeah. So... Anakin is hanging onto the ship, trying to fight Cad Bane. Cad Bane takes off, and Anakin has to bail like right before he gets to the to the blue screen of death. Mm-hmm. And then he's running, he's doing like the run along parallel thing. Uh, calls out to Yularen and says, yep. "Yularen, shut down the hyperspace rings." And then Yularen says, "What could possibly have happened between when I just talked to you and now?" So there's yeah. the proof that they did have a conversation. Uh, yeah, I'll agree with that. Presumably, Yularen talked to him in the docking bay, walked mm-hmm. upstairs, and then got a call. And Anakin's like, shit's fucking going down. Like, turn these things <laughs> yeah. off. Yeah. And uh, so Anakin tells him it's Cad Bane. Just fucking shut down, the, shut down the rings. And there's uh, one of those little semi semi movie quotes that we get here where mm-hmm. Yularen says, No, shut them all down. Yeah. So reference maybe to some <laughs> trash compactors of nineteen seventy seven fame. Um, Definitely. I I do want to comment really quick that sure. there is an interesting I found it comedic between Yularen's uh just like flat dissonance mm-hmm. with Anakin yelling at him to do something. Right. And then, like, the immediate cut to, shut them all down. What are you doing? Like, yo. Right. Uh, First, he's like, yeah, what? And, like, come on. Like, what's the yeah. big hurry? And then he's like, oh, fuck, there is a big hurry. Yeah. So I I, I liked that, uh, that zero to 60 in half a second. Did you notice that the, the code that the, uh, the clone officer had to type in was like 400 digits long. He's just like yeah. going to yeah. town, dialing. Which I don't, I don't understand why that's numbers a thing. in a row or something. Yeah. So I thought I thought it was funny, uh, just the entire process, like that chain of command, that red tape you have to go through just to shut that shit down when shit's hitting the fan. So you know that at the end of the day, you Lauren's like. Stupid, you Lauren. You should have just listened, like the one time. Yes, yeah. Because you know he's normally, you know he's normally like, ah, fucking Anakin. Like, I fucking hate this guy, and I gotta listen to mm-hmm. him, and he tells me to do stupid shit, and I do it, and then all the all the fucking clone officers fucking laugh at me. So this time he's like, I'm not gonna listen, and uh, that comes back to bite him in the ass because Bane escapes. I like that you're. Your characterization of Yularen is like that guy who wakes up every morning and just like looks in a mirror is like, today's your day, Yularen. Today's Today your, is the day. Your mustache is good. Your yeah. hair is quaffed. Your mother is going to be proud. This is exactly what you worked for. Mrs. Yularen is going to be happy. Yeah. You're pleasing like A few people. more years. A few more years and you'll rise up even higher in the ranks. You know. The, the clones... The clones will respect you. They're yeah. not going to laugh at you behind your back. Like he's got <laughs> kick me signs on him or something. Yeah. He's just like looking at himself like you are better than your son's stepdad. <laughs> like, like just weird shit like that. You think he's just <laughs> comparing himself to everybody that's out there. Yeah. You know? So he's like uh, Will Ferrell in Daddy's Home. Which I have not seen. So I have no reference for that. But All right. I have a sense of what you mean. Yeah. I've seen the first one. That, I've not seen the second one. That's essentially what I'm going for. Yeah, like Mark Wahlberg shows up to town and Yularen's just standing there like, fuck. 
So, Anakin Skywalker is the Mark Wahlberg of the Star Wars universe. Yes. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Yeah. All right. It's like, you are better. Uh, which, to be fair, I mean, Anakin does have to fight Newt Gunray with that weird Asian accent. And as we know, Mark Wahlberg has really has a problem against Vietnamese men for some reason. Hmm. Yeah. Just a just a thing. Look, I I like Mark Wahlberg as an actor, but I still uh, I will never forget the fact that he uh, beat up and paralyzed a Vietnamese man back in the eighties. So yeah, <laughs> just gonna bring that out. If you aren't aware of that, just look it up. It's a thing he did back in did. his Boston days. Yeah, yeah. So just just cause just cause yeah. Bring bring in the show down, Lorenzo. <laughs> What's the- Hey, I keep the truth out there, should, okay? Should we have a m- moment of silence? Petrus Pepperidge Farm remembers, okay? <laughs> this is <laughs> this is what I do. Uh, I will never forgive uh, Mickey Rooney, and I will never forgive Mark Wahlberg, and I will never forgive Emma Stone for playing a half Chinese woman in Aloha. So <laughs> there, there you have it. <laughs> There we go, everybody. That's been my uh, Anyth- Asian representation soapbox. <laughs> Anything else you need to get off your off your chest? Uh, Westworld this year was pretty good. Going to Shogun World, so that's that's my positive right okay. there. I really, really, really liked when they went to Shogun World and uh, they had Tandy Newton speaking full Japanese, which was a lot of fun. That, that's good. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, what else is Lauren yelling at himself in the mirror? <laughs> I don't know, but uh, so Bane, Bane, Cad Bane. Yep, Bane escaped. So Bane escapes. Anakin knows what they need to do, and he says we have to go inform the council. So they fly all the way back to Coruscant. Yep, because they're not in Hollow, right? They're they're in person. No, they they are in person. Mm-hmm. There's a few, the, the, you know, the few Hollows on the council that still kind of. Yeah, we got Windu, Obi, Yoda. Uh, Fisto and Plo are in hollow form and do not contribute a damn thing to the conversation. Uh, yeah, they're just there. Yeah. Obi-Wan says it's unfortunate that Bane was allowed to escape again, which I find this very, very funny. And we'll find because out why later in the episode. You let me know. Because to me, I definitely see it as like a full, like Ahsoka and Anakin. You guys fucking suck. Like, Well, that's totally the way. That's totally what he's saying. Yeah. Like, oh, you guys fucked up again and yeah. let Cad like, Bane escape like, again. Yeah, he's a simple bounty hunter. You guys are fucking two Jedi. What the hell's going on? Right. So, and Which is a question I legitimately also have, by the way. Like, I'm not going to sidestep that. But anyways, carrying on. Windu's on his soapbox about how he's, he being Cad Bane, has the names and locations of the most Force-sensitive children in the Republic. But I guess not all four sensitive children, just like the most no, four just, sensitive children. Just like the top twenty five, I guess. I don't I don't know how that list gets updated and I don't know I don't either, and I don't I I don't like this kyber crystal of fucking knowledge and names thing. I love yeah, I it, love the kyber crystal being included in the Clone Wars, but I don't yeah. like the way that it was executed. Um I think they wanted somebody wanted to make this a little more important than just like a reference. So mm-hmm. they imbued a kyber crystal with the knowledge of the names of the people or of the next generation just, of yeah force users Which, or whatever. Like, how do you get these names? How do you know? Where do they come from? Right. Up, like, are they, are you force praying for them? Like, I don't know. Up to, the, up to this point, like Jedi have just like found force sensitive toddlers right and then yeah, that's my understanding so yeah uh, so yeah i've well, uh, I yeah think, I, I think we'll get to that because we do spoiler we do see a couple of children of the first and mm-hmm. uh so maybe we can talk about that when we get to it yeah yoda says something like in, in inflict devastation damage on the jedi order he could uh, it's just confusing. Like, yeah, I get it. He's they want to have Yoda in the conversation, but 
this this whole thing was like drawn out to basically say shame on you everybody knows what's at stake here i don't know if this is just a recap for viewers that may not have seen the last two episodes or what um, yeah anakin says that they've discovered that bane is working for the separatist which that confused uh, me as well yeah yeah i agree i don't i don't know where that information came from maybe he just kind of flat out said it i'm not really sure i <laughs> he just said it and hope it stuck and it was just like waiting for everybody's reaction yeah i don't i don't really know but obi but yeah, reveals I don't, I don't that there's that thousands either. of children's names on the list so it's not the top 25 it's the yeah. top thousands so uh, uh yeah and then yoda says this thing he says small 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 chance there is through the force the council may detect them uh i read this one of two ways uh-huh when i first saw it I felt like Yoda was uh, a little depressed, like, you know, like there's a fucking small chance in hell that we're going to find, find the, find Cad, find the crystal, find the fucking kids, right? And uh, yeah, not even find, like find the kids that Cad will go after. That's, and I guess that's, that's a magic trick that ain't nobody going to be pulling off, right? Like, right. And then you can also read it as being hopeful. That there is a small chance mm-hmm. that they'll be successful. Do they know that Cad Bane is going after kids? Or do they just know that he stole a holocron so that he could read the crystal and this is the information on the crystal? Yeah, that's the other weird leap that is, in fact, also made. And I had that question as well. Like, I felt uh, like I, I had forgotten something from a previous episode... But uh, sometimes, sometimes in the past, when we're when we're traveling through time, podcasting, recording, there is bigger gaps in when for like week to week recording. Uh, mm-hmm. But not in this circumstance. Like yeah. we just recorded last week for last week's episode, and then this week for this yeah. week's episode. So there hasn't been a big time jump so it's the same amount of time that i would have would have had should i be watching uh these shows when they came out nine years ago yes and yet we're still having trouble remembering various details despite the fact that we spend two hours talking about various details um correct (laughs) but to be fair as soon as we record these episodes and i stitch them together i definitely just move on with life like i definitely mostly forget the little things i will say in certain episodes i will remember big things like like you lauren would be our uh taylor swift and anakin would be our katie perry yeah that's been a while yeah yeah it has been a while since i've ever brought up that reference oh um, you did forget, like tw- you did forget about the super valley i do remember that yeah, that one I still don't remember. That one's still that one's way back there. I don't. I got nothing for you on that one. That's all right. I remember. The Super Valley's way I, back there. <laughs> I remembered. You will have to get me that transcript of us talking about the Super Valley. Like I remember it being a thing. I just don't remember it coming up, if that makes any sense. But yeah, so the my my thing is, uh, basically, even within this one week of between recording episodes i have binged like the entire second half of season two of westworld so then that would be why we got a westworld reference <laughs> yes exactly so other things get pushed out of my brain uh emmys were yesterday you know watched all of that yeah watched like three movies saw predator you know a simple favor Lorenzo <laughs> is a busy guy when it comes to pop culture and uh, consumption of cinema and yeah beyond. So yeah, saw yeah saw Simple Favor, saw Predator. Who also saw a uh, beautiful live uh, the the musical, the Carol King musical. So hmm. saw a live show in addition to two movies and maybe uh, you know some fifteen hours of television. So. Get a hold yeah. of yourself, Lorenzo. Nope. All Clone Wars, all the this time. This is what. This is who I am. This is who I am. Okay. <laughs> this is who I am. Don't don't cry. That's okay. 
<laughs> so anyways, Bing. Um, I, I, yeah, I agree. I have no idea where this information comes from. I have no idea where they're making these, uh, these assumptions from. I don't know if it's coming from the force. I don't understand how the kyber crystal works anymore now. I feel like Rogue One was the one that definitely explained to me how kyber crystals work, and this goes to muddle that completely. Definitely. Um, I, yeah, I'm guessing that they can uh, that the Jedi can use kyber crystals as storage devices, which makes me wonder why you need holocrons. I agree. I don't understand. I what would the have thought are. it was the other way around that the holocron would have had the information, and you needed the kyber crystal to ac- access the information. In the holocron, but or like as a power source or something, right? right? But um, like you have a USB drive, but you can't do anything without it unless you give it some power via a USB port on your computer, right? Right. But Does in this instance, the computer doesn't work unless you plug in the USB. Yes. Yeah. Completely. Yeah. Like all computers are off until yeah. you plug in that USB. So we're so. in agreement that the 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 kyber crystal thing is a little bit confusing and where. Um, I think they're making some, some, they being the, the big three of the Jedi council and Anakin are making some logic leaps. Uh, and I guess we just have to do the same and then move yeah. forward and we'll see, yeah, we'll see how it pans out. So <laughs> yeah, at this point we cut to Bane and Sheevil talking yep. about their next move. And here's the information that the Jedi already knew. Sheevil tells Bane to pick four kids doesn't matter. Snatch them. Take them to Mustafar. Mm-hmm. And then... Yeah. Why four? I don't know. But I don't know. Four is the he number. Wants, he wants four. Uh, mm-hmm. Bane says something about, you know, about the Jedi kids being innocent. And Shivel says, no Jedi are innocent. Which, okay, but they're not Jedi yet. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, my big question is, how did uh, how'd Bane get all his clothes and his hat back? He just has multiple copies, right? Okay. Just that's all I got. Okay. But I agree. It's yeah. He got his clothes back, uh, and it's the exact same outfit. You know, mm-hmm. nothing off whatsoever. It's just the exact same outfit. Do you think that he went back to uh, the ship that got blowed up and found that clone trooper nope. that he murdered in cold blood? And nope. He just. Went to the thrift store and happened to find the exact same outfit. I was thinking that maybe the hat could potentially be new uh, because it, lo- it does look like he picks off like a little piece of fuzz or something. Mm-hmm. You know, he's like inspecting it, make sure it's clean, picks off the fuzz, yeah, throws it down. But kind everything of- else pretty much is same costume design, like I- absolutely nothing different. I'm kind of disappointed he didn't have his toothpick, <laughs> which was originally a cigarette yeah he's getting ready to kidnap these children that is true which is which is funny that he brings up the objection and then immediately is like whatever as long as i get paid like to me it like it it gives his character layers and then takes it away well i think that he is just questioning uh his boss i think he's just asking shivel like you know, what do you, and he's like, it's a job for me, but, you know, don't you feel bad about this? Like, I don't give a shit, but yeah, you're a but the- morally ambiguous, unethical <laughs> character. So like why, uh, maybe he's, maybe that's the thing is like, why kids? Yeah. Like, do you have, do you have no scruples at all? And she was like, no, no scruples. <laughs> They're not innocent. Take the kids. And he's like, all right. Give me my money. You still owe I, me like a custom fighter ship and fifty billion million credits or whatever from yeah. from the last job. Because like my thing is like if if Cad doesn't care, then why is Cad bringing it up, right? Like that. That would be my only question of that. I see where you're coming from for sure. I I understand your reasoning for it. It just was an odd thing to bring up. And then brush past, right? So. Especially with the idea of this episode being that we are going to straight up kidnap children who cannot even talk, All right? And they can't. They're like they're babies. Like they can't even. We'll get to that, but they can't walk yet either. Yeah, we'll we'll get to that very soon. Um, 
So, so he basically yeah. gets to pick four kids out of a list of thousands, thousands as yeah. Obi Wan said. Uh, so we cut back to to Yoda and the crew, and they are doing some force prayer as you described it earlier. Mm-hmm. They're in Yoda's uh, film the war room with really hard beanbag chairs and mm-hmm. dramatic Venetian blind lighting. Yeah. And they're, they're kind of, it's, it's the four of them. Ahsoka's not there, right? It's just no. the dudes. Yeah. So it's like, this is a no girls allowed club. Do you think Yoda yeah. has like a sign outside his door that says like girls allowed? No. Well, I'm sure, like, they've been in there. Because, like, I would want to say that this is a council meeting, but then Skywalker is not. It's not. The what they're doing council. is they're continuing. This was their plan. So, like, we saw their plan, which was, like, mm-hmm. fuck, Bane got out. So we got to we gotta figure out what, what kids there are. And then Yoda was like, oh, a small chance there is. The council could do this, but maybe the four of us could. And yeah. uh, then we cut to Shivel and Bane, and uh, we find their plan, which is oh, fine, four kids, just go get go get some fucking kids and take them to Mustafar, mm-hmm. right? So then we cut back to the good dudes, and uh, they're chilling on some hard ass bean bags and meditating and praying through the Force, and they just kind of start spouting out random shit. And uh, each of them, I think what happens is each of them identify one of the four kids. Yes. But I feel like Yoda, like, shuts down Obi-Wan on one of them. Which I did find bizarre. Right. Because even uh, Mace questions it at the end as well. Uh Uh-huh. Because my notes are, uh, cut to Yoda sensing Rhodia. Mm -hmm. Obi-Wan refines the search. Uh, Windu says, Ocean Planet, home to Nautilans. These are the Kit Fisto uh, yes. aliens. Uh, Windu says, Glee Anselm. Mm-hmm. Yoda says that he doesn't see Glee. And then Anakin is like, oh, what do I sense? What do I sense? What do I sense? What do I sense? Uh, it's a place I've been before. Naboo. Yeah. yeah. Naboo, that's where I need to go. And uh, Yoda calls out Jan Gua. This is a village in the south. Uh, so I'm confused as to whether Glee Anselm and Jan Gua are individuals or locations. I, I had no idea either as they were shouting it out. Is it um, made clear later? Yes. Right. At least with Jangua. Jangua is uh, a city. Glee Anselm is a child. Yes, because that person, that child is named later on in the episode. Nope. Glee Anselm is an ocean planet. That is where the no, ones what? come from. Then I got really confused because I thought one of them looks at a kid and goes... Ansem or whatever. Yeah, we'll have to so come back to that. So shit just gets more. Yeah, shit just gets more confusing then. But Jangua, I do believe, is named. I could be wrong though. Yeah, I don't know the no, name. The, city. the name of the kids. So okay. essentially, we've located two kids: one on Rodia, one on, or I guess three: one on Rodia, one on Nabu. Naboo and uh, one Nautilan. Yeah. That uh, Yoda's like, nah, I don't know about that. Uh, Anakin looks into the future and sees the 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 child on Naboo, which happens to be a Gungan, uh, like screaming or something, crying, crying out. Mm-hmm. Yoda says, uh, the future you see go to Naboo and then Obi-Wan's like alright cool I'll go to Rhodia and Yoda's like I already said there wasn't nothing on that water planet so fuck it we ain't going nowhere (laughs) Uh, so we got 
two or three out of four. Uh, yeah. I guess that's not too bad. Yeah. Uh, and then Better I guess nothing. Yoda senses that one of the other children is already taken. I don't really know. Yeah. There's a lot of banter going on that gets really confusing. Mm-hmm. And I had trouble keeping up for that reason that we kind of just brought up. They say names. But I don't know if they mean children or cities or villages or planets. Yeah, it's like, hard. It's it's hard to tell because they talk about kid, planet, city, location, like that. All of them, even like species, to some degree. Yeah, you know. species. Yeah, but yeah. they only say like one name. So yeah, we will and with no context may- around it. Maybe maybe we'll see. Maybe we won't. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Obi Wan is heading to Rhodia. Yep. Yep. And this part I thought was pretty freaking awesome. Uh, We cut to Rhodia, and Cad Bane is sitting there in a Jedi robe. Yep. Talking to the mother of this child. Uh, The setup for it is that you see this little toy ball floating across the room. Back mm-hmm. to this giant-headed Rodian baby. Yeah. And uh, she's talking to Bane, and she says, um, what's his face? Bola Rapal. Bola Rapal said that the Jedi would be coming for her, for him, but not not yet, not for a while. Yeah, because he's way too young still. Again, this kind of goes against what we, ha- what we know about... <laughs> how the Jedi come to be at the Jedi Temple. And that's a Jedi Master or a Jedi Knight finds them while they're out on their frolicking adventures and they're mm-hmm. like they're like, hey I'm Qui-Gon. Your kid is strong with the force, so I'm gonna take him with me. Yeah. And <sighs> then they take the kid. They don't say, hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna write your kid's name down and put it on a list and save it in a crystal. Uh, that yeah. like is Bola Rapal like checking against the crystal that the kid is indeed force sensitive or I don't think so what, because that would what mean direction that, like, is that going I think that yeah. would mean that the the crystal is like some t- has some sort of sentience where it can self create this list I don't like this list it doesn't make sense yeah well because like we're talking they're, about they're... trillions and trillions and trillions of fucking people well, yeah, because that's why, like, it confuses me that the list even has thousands on it. Because is the list self-updating? Is somebody heading into those archives to update the list? Are they using the force to guess at which children may be force-sensitive, adding it to the list, and then Bola Rapal goes and finds this child and verifies, yep, this kid's force-sensitive. I think the list doesn't make sense. I don't disagree. I Do think that the disagree. idea is that Bola Rapal is creating this list. Yeah. I think there's way too many beans in the galaxy. Yep. And I think that by the time that Bola Rapal gets back with a list of thousands of people, like how many so how many people can he visit in a day? Yeah, uh, I mean, I'm just gonna throw out like the number of say like a dozen. Okay, right? maybe so, like two an hour if the planets are close and if yeah, there's a lot of ifs that have to go along with that. Yeah, it also depends on how you feel that hyperspace works. If it's near instantaneous or if it is, you know, like an, there's still some expanded... transit time. Yeah, like I don't like. It, it could be as low as, like, literally one a day. And then he travels somewhere, stays somewhere for the night, checks out, like, three that happen to be on that planet the next mm-hmm. day. So you know? where's where's he getting the leads from? My point is that uh, for this yeah. to be practical, by the time that he compiled a list of thousands of kids, the kids that he first met to put on the list would be mm-hmm. too old. Yeah. And also, like, the more we kind of get into this idea of how children join the Jedi Temple, like, the more uncomfortable I am with the entire idea, which is weird, you know. 
Like I I understand the reasoning, but it's just like one of those weird things that got added to canon later on that was I don't weird. know. I don't know if it did. I mean Yoda talks about how Luke is too old and I mean Luke's 19, so uh you like know, that I understand. Probably it's like, the idea of younglings have been around and I'm not against say like if it cuz don't they give Anakin the same reasoning at 10 years old, right? Yeah, 9, 10, 11, 12, how nine, old he is. Yeah. Yeah, 9 or so. Yeah, 9 and then cuz Padme's like 14, there's like 5 year difference or whatever. Right. And they tell him he's too old then, right? Like it's one of those weird things where if if they didn't tell him that, then I would be comfortable with that, right? Like a five to ten year old wanting to join taekwondo makes sense to me right and then like a 19 year old wanting to join taekwondo is fine but then that kid saying he wants to be uh, that 19 year old person saying that they want to be like a taekwondo fucking master against john claude van damme like that's where you're gonna be like, okay, yeah, you're a little, you're a little old to say, be well practiced with all of this, but sure, we will start your training, right? But the fact that you have to kind of like grab these kids young, like sub nine years old, and the idea that the whole reasoning is so that you don't form attachments. And then seeing the fact that this mother is about to, like, lose her child and she even, like, cries out, like, he's my only child. Which is why this fucking list doesn't make sense. Because what would happen is that you identify the Force-sensitive fucking kid and then you remove them at that point. You don't fucking tell yeah, the parent, I'm going yeah. to kidnap your kid later. But then, like, what doesn't make sense about the system to me is, like... <sighs> <laughs> it's weird that you have as many willing parents as you do to give up a child. Well, I think that it's supposed to be an honor. Like, uh huh. So, yeah, like it's it's supposed to be an honor. Like it's it's supposed to be this elite thing where, like, hey, your child was selected for this thing that is bigger than all of us mm-hmm. to be a part of, to to you know, help the galaxy to fucking do whatever. That's what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be like the Okay, I see the goddess that. child yeah. in uh I don't know where cuz I'm not cultured, right? Mhm. Um that is like carried around in a basket for her entire fucking life and and treated <laughs> with reverence for you know, but it's just but again like there's no like the Dalai Lama didn't lose like all connections you know I mean like well I'm not saying that the fucking religion is flawless I'm just saying that that's the idea behind Uh, going in and And I I think the fact I see that that reasoning for sure I'm just still I'm just still surprised that there are as many that there are more than not uh, parents that are down for that well, that idea. There should have. Well, obviously, this lady's not down with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Anakin's mom was down with it because she was a fucking slave that got knocked up by a Toydarian racist. Yes, you know what I'm saying. Completely. Yeah. Do you get so. that reference? <laughs> yes, that one. Okay. Yeah. Uh you know, so uh, I think it's individual. I think. I think having this list creates complications in in the whole process of bringing kids into the Jedi Temple. I think that there are too many fucking people on this list. Like you said, it should mm-hmm. be like the top 25 or something if there needs yeah. to be a fucking list. <laughs> because there's like... In Attack of the Clones, overall, there's like 10,000 Jedi. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, like 220 or 200 and 
ninety seven or some shit like that were killed off at the Battle of Geonosis. Yeah, like, there were casualties there, so they're being weaned down through the Clone Wars. We've seen, we've personally seen three die. We have witness of four gone. Uh, mm-hmm. This each death is supposed to be catastrophic to the Jedi Order. So then, just having a list of like thousands of fucking kids that it's like. Well, you know, we lost like four, but you know, there's two thousand, four, two, three, four, five, ten thousand on this fucking list. Like, let's yeah. just go pick them up and and we'll keep going. It diminishes the importance of the remaining Jedi. Yeah, I don't disagree with you there either. That's a good point you bring up for sure. That I I didn't not think of it on those terms. So, yeah. But I, either way, let's let's carry forward. Yeah. All right. To what carry. F- Obi Wan shows up to to try to rescue this this uh, this Rodian. Rodian. One thing one thing I did forget is that um, Cad Bane is trying to convince this mom uh, because when she says Bolo Paul said it'd be later and he's. He does this really clever thing that I love seeing in movies. And what he says is, yeah, but Bola didn't know that there are people going around abducting Force-sensitive children for bad things. Yeah. Which is like, he's he basically says, this is what I'm doing, but I'm warning you against what I'm doing, which also justifies what you think I'm doing. Yeah. I think that's great. I love it. I love that. I love it when there's like double speak. Uh, it's and it's clever. Yeah, it's definitely clever. It's clever. I like it. Mm-hmm. Uh, she still doesn't agree, and then he pulls out this LED flashlight and fucking shines it in her face. Uh, so immediately before the show, Lorenzo was like, "What the fuck are you doing over there?" And I was like typing furiously because I don't know how to type uh, very well because I graduated college a long time ago and I no longer <laughs> have to use my fingers to to type on keyboards uh but i was looking up what this thing is and it's called a hypnogazer and apparently this is a medical device uh that was designed to place a being in a hypnotic state interesting so Hmm. it's like an artificial jedi mind trick thing uh so when obi-wan shows up he knocks on the door and she says it's too late my son's already gone and Obi Wan's like, "What are you talking about?" And like forces his way into her apartment, which is kind of rapey. Um, which I was, yeah, I also found yeah uncharacteristically aggressive mm-hmm. from Obi Wan. I I did have that feeling about it. Like from a story standpoint, it makes sense why the writers would want him to do that. But they just didn't have him do it in the right way. Do you think that, that there was? some uh force sense or spider sense or whatever you want to call it that he's like this lady's not of her own mind right now like something's going on if there was it didn't show it at all i I got i completely agree with you i got no sense of that he literally Mm -hmm. just starts banging on the door he's like open this door and i'm like why are you yelling like god damn it open the door yeah like it's really it was super weird from a Jedi perspective. And then he so either it, forces the door open or she opens it and then, like, has a blaster on him. Yeah, somehow he, he gets in. And um, she says, the other Jedi already took him. And this is the weird part is that Cad Bane is standing there with the baby, like, fucking ten feet away. Yeah, like, right there. It's really weird. Like, he's just on the other side of the door, which it, is weird. Like, It's, like, off the edge of the camera view. And then yeah. only when the camera pans do you see he's at a second door. And he's, like, not even attempting to hide. He's literally just nope. standing under the door frame. So, you know. so he blasts off with his rocket boots, which are kind of yep. cool. Uh, then we've got Anakin arriving on Naboo. So he talks to Captain Panaka, who introduces him to Captain Lunker. Uh, who is a Gungan. And then they head to... I don't know, because I can't read my writing. Jen... Jangwa? 
Yeah. Jangua. Jangua. Yeah. Yep. Jangua City. Yep, that's when we get the, the naming of this city. So that's that's so that, the one thing we did get. That one is for sure a city. Yeah. Um one thing I want to bring up real quick here and then we can we can move past it. Uh mm-hmm. Captain Panaka's like, hey, Lunker over here is going to take you to Jengwa because this is the fucking kid. Because I guess everybody would know, like, that's the Force-sensitive kid because this Jedi already already came and wrote her name on a fucking grain of rice, right? Yeah. And made us pay $14 for that at the mall or <laughs> whatever. That's a reference to things that they used to do in the 90s at the mall. Where you could yep. go and you could get your name written on a grain of rice, and then yeah. they—I think they gave you the rice, but then they charged you like an exorbitant amount of money for like the magnification fucking pendant. Yeah, pendant. like you're paying for the frame or whatever that was going around that sucker <clears throat> or something. Yeah, yeah. So like it was—it was between that and uh, did you do the sand art? I was a sand art kid. Nope. Uh, do you know what I'm talking about? Yes, like in the Is jar. That- the, yeah, the long tubes, and you just put the different colored sands, and you just make the different mm-hmm. layers. I never had any of these things, no, but I am familiar with them. I never <laughs> had a grain of rice with my name on it. Oh, I didn't do the grain of rice. I never did that. So, But I did a lot of sand art. Because uh, they used to have it like Cedar Point, too, for any uh, mm-hmm. oh, it's a very, folks. That, yeah. It's a very touristy thing. My oh, thing completely. is uh, the smashed penny. Oh, yeah. I have a lot of smashed pennies from Disneyland, that's for sure. I have a bone to pick with Smash Pennies from Disney. Why? Uh, so I was at the Star Wars store at Downtown Disney in Orlando, mm-hmm. and they had like six, like a you know six fucking Star Wars Smash Pennies. Yes. So, uh, I collected coins out of my kid was buying stuff, and I would when she would get changed, I'm like, hey, give me your pennies, right? Mm-hmm. Until I got six pennies, and then I'm like, I'm going back to the Disney store. And yep. I had a few dollar bills, and I'm like, okay, I can probably get a couple of these or whatever. And then I found out that it uh, runs on credit card. So I'm like, okay, it's, I'll swipe yep. my card, and uh-huh. then I'll put my pennies in. I do not think that these are actual smashed pennies. I think they're no. smashed copper nuggets, and this pisses me off. Like, it depends on the machine. It definitely depends on the machine. Because the machine I like, used did not utilize actual pennies. If because you were at the store, this is how stupidly specific <clears throat> I remember because I had the same thought with only the Star Wars machines. The rest of the machines throughout the Walt Disney World Resort, for the most part, mm-hmm. with the pennies, would use the pennies you dropped in there. Yes, that's usually the way it works. Yeah, and I because you com- drop two quarters and a penny in. Yes, right. And I they take com- the two quarters, obviously, and and it yeah. was more. It was more expensive. I think I paid like five bucks like, for yeah. like six smash pennies or something like that. Yes. Uh, but they're yeah, not they don't pennies use, because you can tell like when they you use get the a smash quarters. Penny, it's the silver ones, yeah. Because I know the machines you're talking about. It's the one that were like by the food trucks. There's like a Star Wars specific store that was across like three food trucks. When you're closer on the end towards, uh, if you're from Orlando, you're going to know this. It's like the side that has Splitsville, the AMC, and what used to be the Cirque du Soleil yep. stage. Um, yeah, that one has preloaded, like... Copper slugs. Yeah, because I don't even... I think that one's. if you go back <laughs> and look, they were made to look more like smashed quarters, I think. Nope, I, I have them right next to me. Those are the qu- there's are still pennies because there are some in Disneyland that do that and they they print out on uh, big silver nuggets uh, and I have those so oh yes yeah those are indeed f- like weird copper nugget things yeah, but yeah those but aren't you, pennies at all the way you can tell is on <clears throat> on the sorry about that on the smooth side on the back mm-hmm. normally you will see. Either the face or the tail of the penny. Yeah. Smash and elongated. Smushed out, yeah. And I was looking at these and I was like, no, these are like super smooth. Yeah, no, they're no. There's no there's no indication whatsoever. And so. there's no um depending on what you have, there's no striation in them either, right? Like you don't uh if you use newer pennies, you'll see striation because it's the uh Right, the, the actual 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's yeah. You have to use a penny that was uh, made prior to 1982 uh, in order to have a full copper penny. Right. Um, so I literally walked around Walt Disney World when I, you know, last year when I met you, uh, with a heavy bag filled with, you know, likely over a dollar's worth of pennies that were all pre-1982. I am right there with you. Because I was that specific. But, yeah, no, there's a few machines like that. Uh, the reason I'm getting it confused, because at Disneyland, in the Tomorrowland store, they have the same thing where, you, like, you put four quarters in, but I don't think mm-hmm. any of those quarters are what pops out, mm-hmm. um, which gets weird. But all the rest, even though they're, like, they're all mechanical, you can see the penny, like, dropping in, mm-hmm. and then you see it getting dropped into the thing that gets smushed, and then out drops a warm penny. Yes. Uh, because it got run through the machine. Correct. Uh, they have nickel machines and qu- uh, dime machines that will also do that. And yeah, a I just handful. Want, I just want the pennies. Yeah, there are a handful of quarter machines that will do that, but you can definitely tell that, as you say, that you do not see the elongated uh, face or uh, memorial on the back. Right. Um, and final tells. note, final note about the smushed penny that I hear all the fucking time, and I it really annoys the shit out of me. Um, Is it the legality it, of it? it? Yes. Because it's not illegal to make smush pennies because you are not going to pass them off as different tender. That's what makes it illegal. It's not I- illegal to alter money. It's illegal to alter money for the... It, like it, If you're going to draw a zero on a $10 bill and try and pass it off as a Benjamin, yeah, that's illegal, right? Yeah, because you have to write Benjamin on it also. Yes. Like, if you are trying to bleach a $1 bill to reprint a, a Benjamin on it, yeah, that's highly illegal. But, like, I can't take a smash penny, go to, you know, Walgreens, and be like, hey, take this penny that has Mickey Mouse's face on it. You yeah. are going to the wrong Walgreens. <laughs> I, I don't... go to... Huh? I was I was just gonna say I don't know how we got on the subject of pennies. Uh yeah, how did we get on the topic of uh, smush pennies? What were we talking about? We were talking Anyways. about uh, Anakin talking to Lunker and going to Jengua, and uh, oh, I don't know. That's the last thing. I I got nothing. I, I don't really know. don't. I, I don't, don't know. know. But anyways, let's carry on. Um, <laughs> Ahsoka decides yes. that uh, she says I'm I'm pulling lead on this one, Master, because I got a score to settle. This sounds a hell of a lot like revenge. I don't disagree. Uh, and I feel like what Anakin should say is no snips. Yeah, that's Stop not the way that. the Jedi op- operate. But instead, talk. he's like, "All right, cool. I'll catch up later. Peace." Yeah. Like I said, uh, like I said last week, I don't like her. Yeah, I don't like her. And yeah, it's it's little things like this that kind of add to that, right? It's it's this <laughs> fucking list that did it. That's that's all I've got to say. Yeah, there's there's other weird issues here, uh, but anyway, so so Bane shows. She up. has a score to schedule to settle. Yep. Bane shows up. They get in a little fight. Uh-huh. Uh, Bane shows up. There is, like, a, like a fucking... There's a baby Jesus switcheroo. bassinet in the middle of this... Yeah. This godly Empty light room. coming from... Coming from the ceiling. Yeah. Uh, There's nothing in the room but this bassinet. Yeah. And then... Bane sneaks in, sees the same type of doll that are our, our delightful... Uh, our delightful Twi'lek baby girl had. That was, what was her name? Nala, I think. Something like that. Yeah. Numa, Nala, something. But it doesn't make any sense, though, because he thinks he's going to find a, a Gungan. And uh, then you see, like, the two ears. Uh-huh. And then from a visual standpoint, for this scene specifically, like, in... Maybe he's never up, seen a Gungan. I get. I mean, didn't he have to, like, pass a million of them getting into that spot? Like No, because he's sneaky. I, I guess. But, yeah, like, and then he, well, he undoes the blanket. There's the fucking doll. Also, the doll is, like, smaller than his hand, which is 
you know. Well, maybe it's one of those things where it's like know. he knows that he's been had. He so he just he sees it through. Just yeah, to, and he's like fucking fuck. It's a fucking yeah. fuck moment. Yeah, but then Ahsoka is there, and then yeah, he makes a, a a snappy quip and says, "You're not the you're not the child I was looking for." Yeah, but then they get in a fight, and then which uh, is a pretty good fight. It's well done, yeah. I'll give that part that credit. So it's a it's a well done fight. Um, he, she actually captures Cad Bane this time around instead of being a dumbass, right? No. He what? tries. He blasts off, and Anakin jumps up and grabs him by the ankles, oh, and then they that's smash right. the ground. So that's he's taken right. into custody. The next thing we see is uh, him in a jail cell. No, there's one thing that does happen before. We oh, get okay. To that point. Go ahead. Ahsoka takes her weird fucking braid back. Oh yeah, right. So <coughs> the, her then score is settled. Score is score is settled. So we we've settled that little thread that we've kept open for the last what would have been probably two minutes, but we had to talk about pennies. So yes. <laughs> uh, but you're you're right. Um, uh, yeah, Anakin's the one that takes him down. He's in jail. Uh, they're trying to uh, interrogate him. Right, and Ye- then yep, and uh, that's not working out. So I said, <laughs> "Oh, we want to maze play like good cop, bad cop, kind of." But, but then Bane knows that they aren't gonna like. There's no like the bad cop side of this can only be so bad, right? Because he knows that there's there are empty threats. Yeah, he's like, like you're there's Jedi. No torture you're, that's you're, you're, what are you gonna do to me? Torture me? No, I'm yeah. just gonna sit here. This, this conversation is over. Like, yeah, he's a fucking badass dude. Yeah, he's pretty chill about this whole situ- like being captured situation. Um, another thing of note is that the navigation logs on his ship have been wiped, uh-huh. so they figure that part out. Yep, because Obi Wan and Mace leave, and then mm-hmm. Anakin, Soka come in. Apparently, they were tasked with like figuring out, I don't know, searching the ship or some shit. Mm-hmm. It's like a it's like a one seat ship. Like where can you hide shit? You know, but whatever yeah. they they look through and so there's uh, nothing there. Uh, the four of them converge and they're like, they all agree this isn't working out. Ahsoka makes the suggestion that they should force him with the force to tell him where the force kids are. And uh, yeah, they wanted to mind trick him, but then Obi Wan brings up that he's a little too powerful for mind yeah, tricking. He's he's not gonna fall for mind tricking. Yeah, and, and then I don't recall who I didn't write down who, but one of them brings up that they should all try mind tricking him at the same time. Mm-hmm. Right, which I think is a interesting, clever idea. Right, uh, to overwhelm him with the force, I guess. Yeah, it was either it was either Anakin or Ahsoka. Yeah. Uh, One of them kind of brings it up. I think it was Ahsoka, and then Windu says, uh, you know, it's a delicate task because you might fucking break their brains, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, they decide to go for it. So then they head back in, and one by one, like, Anakin's like, you will tell us where the the kids are. And he's like, nope, no, I'm not. And then Obi-Wan joins in, and then Mace Windu joins in. And then Ahsoka is standing in the background, kind of looking horrified because yeah. this this really looks different than like force suggestion. There's like something else going on here, and this is like borderline dark. It is a it is pun not intended, but it is a more forceful push mm-hmm. of the mind for sure. And they definitely sell it visually between. Just the lighting, the angling on the Jedi themselves. Even, um, I don't know if you noticed, but the, uh, it, it's an animated show, so it's hard to make this correlation, especially with a show that premiered in 2009. So even uh, theatrical CG movies were just c- getting into this idea. But um, the lens of the shot on the Jedi changes a little bit. It's okay. what would be a shorter lens. The So it changes depth of field is what you're saying? Not even depth of field, just the um it's not depth of field. It would be just kind of the relationship. The the proportions okay. are a little bit more exaggerated with the hands forward. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense, right? 
So that's something that would be achieved by having a shorter lens closer to subject. Right. Um, uh, so you have this so that's giant ass hand here. Completely. Yeah. Versus mm-hmm. just, you know, the hands are exaggerated. And then I on the you. flip side of that, Cad Bane is freaking the fuck out, essentially. And you know what he does? He goes he along fu- with. Well, yeah. I was going to say he fucking beats him. Like. He does not give in. And then Anakin is like, ooh, maybe we should do it again. He's like, you know what? Fuck <laughs> oh, it. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So, like, they, it doesn't... Because he doesn't want... Yeah, he doesn't, doesn't diverge. Work. Yeah. And he doesn't divulge information, but mm-hmm. um, but he'll, he he doesn't want to go through whatever happened again. Right. So he then, says, get out of my mind, or get out yeah. of my brain, or get out of my head, or something like that, right? Yeah. And uh, they let up... He still hasn't given the information. And then it's only when Anakin is like, okay, let's do it again and harder uh, that he's like, nope, I don't want to go through that again. Like yeah. enough's enough. Um, so I found that interesting that they, instead of just asking him and then like, if he would have said no mm-hmm. to do it again, it's weird that they're like, no, bring me with you and I will take you to where you want to go. Well, that's kind of like uh, when Han Solo is being tortured, and mm. he's like, "They didn't even ask me any questions," I which mean, is kind of fine. I mean, that's fine. They just want to torture him for the joy of torturing him, right? But in this case, they're after information. Mm-hmm. But then, it's such an obvious security risk to bring this fucker along, right? Th- this is a a, a complete. An utterly repeatable failing of the Jedi, where it's like oh, absolutely, they yeah. they do this shit all the time, yeah, uh, completely. Like, like bad, sh- bad they- guy does bad thing, yeah. Jedi collect bad guy, uh, Jedi convince bad guy to show them something. Bad yeah. guy says, "I have to go along," and then inevitably, bad guy gets away. So yeah. that happens by. Uh, Cad saying, all right, I'll take you. Right. Yeah. But and really, the, they should have just been like, no, just give us a location. You're staying behind the cell. Right. You know. But instead, so like, they're all. Like, why? Yes, we'll take you along. Great. Fantastic. And mm-hmm. then at some point, one of them's even like, no, it's definitely a trap. But. Yeah. Mace, Obi. Yeah. Uh, Cody and Cad are all going to get in this this Jedi transport. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is a Jedi T6 shuttle. It kind of looks like a half a Frisbee or some shit, and it's got like this rotating yeah. thing in the middle, which the des- the design of the ship is really awesome. But before we get to that, uh, Anakin is pushing like, hey, bring us along, bring us along. You're going to need us. Bring us along. And Mace and Obi are like, nope, we got this one. Like, you yeah. stay here and fucking dust the ship for fingerprints. Yeah, or check the something. ship again, whatever. Again. Yeah. Redo what you just did. I don't. I don't know. And uh, and Anakin then, says, "But I'm sensing a trap." And yeah. May says, "Of course it's a trap, Skywalker. Like what the fuck, you know?" Yeah. So what bothers me? Do you me think is we this... actually believe this guy? Like, of course yeah. it's a trap. So then why bring him along? Just yeah. Anyways, um. So the coordinates that Cad gives them are. Uh, in the far outer rim, not even the outer rim. Yeah, the far, the outer, far rim. outer rim. And this is, uh, what is, what's Obi Wan call it? Neutral space. So it's like international yeah. waters. Uh, I wrote down what the coordinates were, thinking that maybe we could talk through and see if this was made any sense or was like code for something else, but I'm I think it's lie. just jibber jabber. Yeah, I, I was about to write that down too for the same thing, but as soon as he said them, I'm like, nope, this is yeah. going to be a waste of time. It's 673117 um, nope, cross 7RB71, that's it. Um, don't even you heard it. Care. Like, you heard I, it again. Nope, yeah, see. You just, did it. You heard it. Absolute random shit. Yeah. Like, yeah. If I you think want to pick lottery different. numbers, go for it. Yeah. Uh, there is one thing that does happen that we need to quickly address is that before Mace and Obi-Wan leave, uh, Anakin brings up for some weird reason that he wants to bring it up with uh, Palpatine. Oh, okay. And then 
uh, Obi Wan is like, it's an internal matter. Like, why? Why does Palpatine need to know? And yeah, Mace Mace Windu says the Chancellor wants to report on our progress. Obi Wan mm-hmm. says essentially it's none of his business. It's Jedi stuff. Anakin says I disagree. Jedi acting as military, or the Jedi are acting as military, so we should report to the Chancellor even on internal matters such as this. So then Obi Wan, that's when Obi Wan says, "Well, I guess you just volunteer." That's your job. And yeah. then Mace says, "Report back when you're done." Uh, this is when Anakin is, goes into the, it could be a trap thing, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, blah, so that, blah, blah. So that moving on, yep. to speed. so then. Uh, so while, while Mace and Obi-Wan are going with uh, with Cad Bane, uh, Anakin, Anakin and Ahsoka have the task of reporting to the Chancellor. So they mm-hmm. go there. Yeah. Um, they he go mentions there. that he does not think that, he explains the situation to Palpatine. He doesn't think Count Dooku's behind it for whatever reason. Yeah, um, and Palpatine asks, do you know who's behind it? And he says, not he yet. Know. Like, nope, yeah. we don't have a clue. So, and, that's it. They just And Palpatine's like, I'm sure you'll find him at some point, and then moves on. There's so also cut- a hollow of Sheev. Uh, on Mustafar? On Mustafar. And he As talks about is. the slave conditioning procedure. Uh, the droid actually is like, eh, these subjects are pretty young. They're probably not going to survive. And she says like the natural talent is too great to be wasted by the Jedi. Then he's got this weird dialogue where he is walking, like the, the hologram itself is walking around, uh, looking back and forth as if he were talking to people, but he's not. So yeah. I'm just, I'm imagining what it looks like from the recording angle as opposed to the projection angle. Oh, that was my question completely. Um, you know I ask this a lot. I have no idea what he's actually looking at. I don't know if things are well, auto-populating around him, the, if he's in like a giant hologram room. Yeah. Cause he's, he I don't think they're in a giant the... hologram room, but they have to. he's got to have like the little, the little holograms on his end. Right. Yeah, but then if he's walking between bastonets, how does he know where they are unless he has, like, a frame of reference for where they are? Does that make sense? It does. And what Because jump- he leans over and into a bassinet. Oh, to he look absolutely at it does. Yeah. What caught my eye more than that is, like, this R4 unit or whatever the mm-hmm. fuck it is. Uh, when when Sheevil takes steps, like. He's like rolling and like maneuvering around the room as well mm-hmm. to keep Shivel's projection like where it needs to be. Yes. I liked this because a lot of times we just see hollow projections. And yes. We're like, because yeah, I... where are they coming from? Where did you come from? Where did you go? <laughs> uh, no, that's going to get stuck in my head. No, no, no. Um, because. Uh, <laughs> uh, because in episode one, there's the platform that follows backwards uh-huh. along the... Because who's on that? It's Newt Gunray on the platform, and he's talking to... Newt Gunray's on, like, a spider fucking yeah. chair. Being projected while, like, Padme is walking, right? Is that who I'm thinking of? Or is it the Jedi? I don't recall. But don't anyways, know. there's some sort of spider platform that also, like, leans a little bit back and forth, which mm-hmm. is, again, fucking weird. Because then what there's is There's, like, Newt a camera to it. Um Yes. Um, so I, I agree. I like that the hologram has some physicality in the room. It just does not make sense the moment you think about that for more than two seconds from Palpatine's side of view. I agree. Um, and I think there's one other, at least one other thing. There's definitely mm-hmm. more than one other thing that doesn't make sense in this whole fucking scheme of things. But... Uh, so one of the first things he says is about the slave conditioning procedure, right? Yep. His dialogue in this little diatribe is, I foresee an army of forced talented spies in my service, trained in the dark side to peer into every corner of the galaxy from afar, and my enemies would be helpless against such vision. Then he talks about initiating, like, the surgery or something. Mm-hmm. 
that's when the the droid is like usually the subjects don't survive the procedure or whatever mm-hmm. so, so definitely after the first viewing and maybe the second one like I was confused what like what the fuck is he trying to do is he <laughs> trying to extract the force out of these children I, I have no idea honestly <laughs> But then, like, the second time or the third time I watched this, I think, uh, what caught my eye was, like, the conditioning deal or whatever. So, it was, Uh like, trying to, like, drill into their brain and make them, like, loyal to him. I I honestly don't know because... uh, Because, like, if you listen to this, this fucking rhetoric that he's spewing... What it sounds like is that he wants to extract the force from these force-sensitive children and then be able to dole the force out to his minions so that they can be imbued with the force and then go out and be his fucking army of force-sensitive whatever, which I guess maybe later is supposed to be the... Fucking what are the dudes in Rebels? What are the, the what? Dude? What are the fucking like uh, the Inquisitors? Yes, that is what <laughs> I'm going for. Okay, I not that's gonna his lie. Long, I, that's his long term goal. I didn't get that at all because he is so fucking vague about it. Other than surgery, create an army, fuck the Jedi, right? Right, like. There's nothing beyond that. I I agree. I have no idea. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. This after last week of me watching a thing twice and it turning me so negatively. This time I did just give it a one through mm-hmm. and took notes. But I think on the opposite end that also fucked me because this episode is so vague about certain things that I feel better about it though only because thinking back there was nothing to what he said and i don't think a second viewing would help me explain to you what he means by any of this <laughs> because yeah. there's nothing he fucking said the first time i watched it i was like what and the second yeah. time i watched it i was like what uh... and the third time i watched it, i was like what? yeah <laughs> it's just like everything yeah yeah uh, yeah, yeah. Ooh, so, yeah, no, no. Uh, mm, well, no. Hmm. yeah, the, no. So there's there the, these are leaps that the show has. The show's not even dropping hints. It's just like throwing shit at a wall, you know, for better or for worse. It's just it's just there. It's just hanging there. Um, like there is an intent, you know, but as to anything beyond why you know, or minute details. We know nothing. He just wants to take these babies and fuck the Jedi, you know? So, uh, what happens next? Uh, we cut back to the half Frisbee ship. Yes. They are docking in, I don't know what a station, some asteroids. Yeah. Uh, There's no explanation of what the fuck this thing is, but it has a name. It is black stall station. Uh, it's got its own Wikipedia page. Uh, it is in this episode and this episode only. And when I saw it, I was like, man, this thing is fucking cool. Like, why doesn't this thing pop up later? Nope. But yep. we quickly it, find there. out, we quickly find out why it doesn't pop up later. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so as soon as they land, the Jedi, uh, mentioned that they don't sense any of the children there. Yep. Uh, Bane says that the the children are cool. They're chill. Yeah. Um, he says they're safe. He, don't want your holocron. Like, that's why we're yeah. here. Yeah. So he, he's leading them to the holocron first. Which uh, shame he on offers, the Jedi for thinking that everybody's in the same fucking spot. I'm, again, uh, shame on the Jedi for bringing Cad. Like, <laughs> yeah. There's a lot, there's a lot happening with the Jedi that I do not understand at this moment. Um, I do like this moment where. Cad says, "Here, I'll get you the holocron." He's still like in binders and everything too. Mm-hmm. Like he's got his, you know, Star Wars uh, handcuffs on. Yep. They leave and, Cody on the ship. Like mm-hmm. Obi Wan's like, and he's no like, Cody. I'll keep it running. You stay, 
You stay on the yeah. ship. Yeah. He's like, Don't okay, worry. I'll keep, I'll keep the, the air running. conditioning on for you. Uh, and then, so, uh, Bane offers to go get it. And Windu's like, no, 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 no. I see through your lies. Yeah. Um, I see through your trap. Yeah. And then takes one step off, like, the platform that they're on. And, and then sets off the trap. Yeah, it sets off the trap. And then I really like The Obi visually. Dad joke? Well, there's that, oh. yes. The, 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 that joke was fine, too. I, I do like the... I, I don't remember the exact word, but Obi-Wan kind of, like, gives out, he like, says, a snarky oh, response. oh, you really stepped in it now. Yeah, that one. Yeah, that one was clever, or not clever, but... It it's a dad witty. joke. It was witty, yeah. It was witty for the moment. Uh, but I like visually the trap that does get set off, which is, like, a bajillion lasers. Um, It's essentially, like, if you thought the scene from die another day that was homaging goldfinger mm-hmm. with the lasers if you thought that was too many lasers this one like triples that essentially yeah my note is lots of lasers spelled with a z yeah. and lots of blasters bane escapes in an escape pod yep and it's like really easy too he's just like fucking hops over like a couple of these lasers it's no big fucking deal mm-hmm. like he's almost like singing his own theme song a la Kronk in emperor's new groove you know and like, then he's like does like the indiana jones wall spinny thing yeah it's like that and i also thought of a uh, young frankenstein with the bookshelf you know yep same uh, same yeah. same yep. gag same me- mechanism yeah we put the candle back um <laughs> yeah so same gag. yep so Bane's gone again. They fucking lose Bane again. Again. Um, but they but they do get the holocron. So they, they you know they got well, that going for them. Not yet, because we have to cut back to to Anakin and Ahsoka. Oh yeah. And this is when they're still checking out the fucking ship. Yeah. Uh, and Ahsoka again gives out like this like weird snarky like why are we doing this again? Why did we? Why did we get the fucking shit into the stick? Yeah, like again, I mean, she's always complaining. She's always fucking complaining. Like she's a fucking fourteen-year-old girl. Yeah, who has clearly been given too much responsibility, such as checking a ship that she has fucking complaints about. Like, just handle the task at hand. Damn. Because yeah. clearly, like in this scene too, like some important information does come up. Yeah, Ahsoka finds, like, ash. Yeah. Residue, carbon buildup, whatever. Yeah. Uh, so then, and then Anakin... They, Anakin does some smart math, essentially, right? Kind of. He comes up with the idea, and Ahsoka figures it out. He mm-hmm. basically says, uh, like, the transportation logs were deleted, but the fuel records are still here, so let's just look at how much fuel they burned, and we know... There, they also have like the hyperspace record, so they know mm-hmm. where what stopping points Bane made. Yeah, they know how much fuel he used, and they can cross reference these things to tell where he like you get a radius went, of travel, right? Yeah, essentially. I don't really, I don't really know because if they know where he stopped, they know where he stopped. So like, there's only like six fucking places he stopped, and three of them they've been to. Yeah. So and then like they point out they're like, well, why did he stop at Mustafar? That's kind of out of the way. Right. Yeah. Anakin says, "Oh, I do want to bring one thing up." Like Go he comes it. up with the suggestion, like we'll cross reference fucking fuel charts with hyperspace drop off points or something. Mm-hmm. And Ahsoka's like, "Wow, that's a great idea, Master." And Anakin's like, "Yeah, it's uh, it's an old Jedi trick." We uh we use it to to pick up smugglers and I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah, I don't No. It's edit this line I out. I don't Yeah, I don't know why Jedi are concerned about smugglers this is, at all. I agree. It, it was a weird point to bring up. It I, it's No. No. Yeah, all I, I can agree. say is no. I agree. So anyways, uh, they the, the they figure out that Mustafar was one of the stops. Yep, they figure out Mustafar was one of the stops because uh, Anakin says, oh, well, you know, maybe stop there for fuel because Ahsoka's like, no, there's no kids on Mustafar. And Anakin says, maybe they stop there for fuel. And she says, like, six systems out of the way, though. So 
They're like, bingo, okay, let's head there. Yep. Now we so cut they... back to Mace and Obi-Wan. Uh, Obi-Wan's picking up the fucking holocron. There's more mm-hmm. lasers. There's more blasters. There's more fucking yeah. everything. Obi-Wan grabs the, the holocron and boogies back to the door. Uh, I feel like picking up the holocron set this door in motion. We have a total Indiana Jones thing going on. Mm-hmm. That door would have stayed open. The exit was free. You could turn around and walk out the exit, but you can't get the holocron. You grab mm-hmm. the holocron, the door's closing, you're gonna get you're gonna get made dead by the lasers and the lasers and the lasers and the blasters. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh Obi Wan's prepared, grabs it, hauls ass, hops a couple lasers, out the door. Mace does a little bit of fighting and uh a really overly long barrel roll to get yeah. out of the door. And of course he drops his lightsaber and then does a little, little force Indiana Jones thing under the door, got his mm-hmm. lightsaber all set. They essentially stand up and they're in the fucking ship. And then Obi-Wan's like talking shit to Cody, like any day now, <laughs> Like, you're lucky that fucking Cody was there with the ship running, man. Yeah. Like, why you gotta sh- talk shit to him? Like, you should be like... Because also, like, there was no... At the time, there was no reason to keep the ship running, right? Nope. Other than that they sensed that it was a trap, but really, like, there was no need for it to stay running. Nope. You know? Just a but, waste fuel. Yep. So you basically. gotta stop it and Mustafar six this in the way. Yeah. So, they're... Yeah. So they blast off, and then... Blast off. It's party time. Yep. And the, and, uh, uh, the thing blowed yeah. up. The thing, Black Stall yeah. Station is just, no more. Yeah, it just self-destructs. There it goes. As quickly as it came into our lives. Mm-hmm. All right. So then we end up on Mustafar, correct? Yep. Next thing we're on Mustafar. Uh, I guess so. One of the, What's going one on of the, now? One of the droids tells Sheevil, because Sheevil is still in hollow form here. He's yeah. been hanging out doing that for a while. Uh, Sheevil so says, a ship is coming. Move, move the kids to facility number two. This place is not well, safe. The, the droid, yeah, the droid says that the ship is coming, yeah. but it's not Bane. Yep. So then uh, Sheev is like, yeah, get the kids out of here. Take them to the second station. This one is just done for. And to uh, essentially like shut down this facility as well right? turn off the gravity supports let this mm-hmm. building sink into the lava that's gonna burn up his lab so there's no evidence right yep. the droids protest ask why uh the twilight lands uh anakin and ahsoka like in r2 really head down this yeah. long ass ramp and she's like is this the right place there is some really 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 nice like subtle ash like floating around in the foreground and background and stuff the Mm -hmm. uh there's nice shall we call it atmospheric animation to this place um so that layering happening yeah Mm -hmm. that caught my eye i wanted to bring it up uh ahsoka says that she senses the dark side uh i got one two three four five notes here she doesn't like it she hears a cry she finds the lab the droids are hiding in the dark, and then mm-hmm. they use these little babies as human shields. Yep. Ahsoka heads for one. Anakin heads for one. How lucky they are that there's only two kids here, mm-hmm. and that uh, Yoda didn't give a shit about one of them, and they stopped one from happening. Uh, so that's good. They uh, they got some some kind of shenanigan fighting against these droids, I guess you could call it. Yeah, so they're trying to get, they're trying to both fight these droids and you know protect the and save the children, which is difficult when the droids are using the children as shields. So Anakin does call out, you know, like be careful the children, and Ahsoka's like, yeah, duh, uh, which I uh, just thought was a weird thing to say when your whole mission directive up to that point is you know rescue the fucking children, right? Um, <laughs> so that happens. But um, to, to be One fair, though, the, the fight scene that plays out is, I th- I think, pretty well done, pretty mm-hmm. fun, pretty exciting. It's a little bit different than 
a lot of the other scenes we've seen. The stakes are definitely different, and yeah. uh, we do have a precursor to uh, Revenge of the Sith type deal going on, where one of the droids does like shut down the life support system of the building or whatever, mm. however you want, however you want to call it. So it starts to self destruct as well, mm. and it's falling into the lava. Uh, and like pieces of the floor drop out. Mm. And these droids, intervals. these droids would have been fucked. Like they're the ones that set the shit in motion, and mm-hmm. both of them end up nearly falling into the lava. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Ahsoka uses her lightsaber to like cut the arms off of the dude that she's fighting, or the chick, or the the droid, the ed, droid, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Uh, cuts the arms off. Grabs the baby, Nautilin. So she's ready to go. Anakin has a tougher time for some reason. Uh, does not use his lightsaber. Uses gravity and luck. And this droid mm-hmm. is like pinned between its wheel and its head. And he jumps down, or he uses the force to grab the Rodian. Yeah. Right? Yep, Anakin pulls out the baby and then literally just jumps on it as a stepping stone to to some parkour running up the wall. Yeah, actually, and like up he to runs the door. along the side of the wall, right? Yeah. Uh, this is a look how cool Anakin's parkour ability are. Mm-hmm. Parkour abilities are shot right because he's. He has his back to the door, which is like three feet away, and he's like, nope, I got the baby. I'm going to jump down into uh, this fucking thing down here and kick this droid out and run off the wall. Like, he could have just yeah. turned around and left. Like, the whole building's just going out. down anyway. So, yeah. yep. he he makes an R2 joke like, oh, where the fuck is R2 when you need him? Because and then R2 the, opens the, door. the control yeah. panel of the door is smashed, mm-hmm. and then R2 opens the door, and he's like, hey, fuck you, I'm right here. Yeah. I yep. know that because and then I they speak get bleep bloop. Bleep yep. bloop bloop bleep bloop, so bloop That's how you say they it. Get on, yeah. Then they get on out of there right as the whole thing falls into the fucking lava. Yeah, it's very convenient so, for them. Yep, lava hot, as it turns out. Uh-huh. <laughs> I said they get back to the ship just in time for the twilight to take off. Uh, and then we are back to... The council chambers on yep. Coruscant with the same masters in the same positions with uh, the same people on Hollow. Mm-hmm. Uh, we only see five total. Two of them never speak because they're in Hollow form. That's Plo Koon and Caddy Mundy. Kit Fist- right? Oh yeah. No Kit Fisto. No Kit Fisto. Kit Fisto. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So uh, there's a little debriefing mm-hmm. and. Anakin and Ahsoka are able to say, hey, we got the kids. And, uh... Somebody's... Uh, what's... And uh, they also mentioned that they still don't know who plotted this whole thing. Right. right? And then Ahsoka... So. Is the Ahsoka that says, yeah, but at least we have Cad Bane. There's, there's right. totally... So this is... What? Yeah. They, I mean, because they kind of have a debriefing where they're like, well, like, Cat escaped. Like, we don't know anything about why this happened, but we have the kids and that's it. So, yeah. like, the yes. situation's fucked. Yes, you are, you are correct. But this is what I was talking about earlier. Like, the first time when Obi-Wan is like, oh, you guys let Cad Bane escape again. Mm-hmm. And I said it was foreshadowing for something we see in the future. And he's going to get his comeuppance because Anakin and Ahsoka are like, hey, we got the kids. Mm-hmm. And then they're like, uh, Did some... you guys get Cad Bane? And she's like, yeah, and at least we got Cad Bane too. And then Obi-Wan totally like deflects it away, and he's like, well, yeah, Cad Bane got away, but like, it's not my fault. Like, you know, he's yeah. pretty fucking crafty or whatever. Like, we don't even need him. Like, it doesn't mm-hmm. matter because we have the holocron. Yeah. So it's like at the beginning so of the episode, just... at the yeah at the beginning of the episode he's like hey you fucking dickwad you fucking let Cad Bane go and then mm-hmm. at the end of the episode he's the one that is was in charge of Cad Bane and you know 
whoops cat bane's gone yeah and ahsoka brings it up and he's like yeah we don't even need him like don't Mm -hmm. even worry about that like it's cool we yeah we chill we got the we got the hall crown we don't need cat (laughs) bane uh yoda's response is i think he's got like the last line of the last line of the episode still, yeah like he's concerned for the future of all jedi or something like that still like, the future of the jedi uncertain is move forward cautiously we must and then we yep. get an overhead shot of annie and ahsoka slowly turning to leave and cue loud music cue loud music yep so that's the end of that one that is the end of that one is that yeah. the end of this uh this cad bane arc do you think i have no idea i didn't again? look forward I yeah he, I mean it, I don't know if we'll see him in the next episode but yeah he's he's out there. So this is kind of what I was talking about earlier like this sort of like this story is wrapped but there are loose threads that are hanging out there. Uh-huh. You know, I so like this isn't a cliffhanger per se but there you know there's just just the idea of open threads. Yeah, it's for open a it's open ended. Yeah. Whereas this is handled well because this story at hand is shut down. Whereas, like, the other episode, the story shut down and then they added on, like, a random scene (laughs) of them getting drinks and then swapping drinks. And there was, like, an attempt to poison their drinks. Like, it was trying to set up too much all at once, which was unnecessary. Mm -hmm. All right. I tell you what, though. We already talked about our opinion of that episode. So let's talk about this one. Yes. Go ahead. What do you think? So thumbs up, thumbs down? Yeah. I feel the pressure, man. Um, I'm going to give this one a thumbs up mm-hmm. and I feel, I feel a little wishy washy. Yeah. I feel like if I had not seen cargo of doom or holocron heist, I don't know that this would have gotten a thumbs up. Mm-hmm. Like if this would have been just a, a solo, uh, episode, I'm not sure because I'm real close to like the the up down line. Um, mm-hmm. I like Cad Bane. I like some of the stuff they did in here. I like the Sheev moments and like the the whole uh, the whole Emperor like dictating his fucking master plan of this army of of Force users following him. I have big questions of how this fits into the rule of two. Mm-hmm. I don't like the Kyber <laughs> crystal list fucking thing. Yeah. Um, I love how crafty Cad Bane is. Cause yes. like the whole, the whole time he's, he's fucking dealing the cards. Mm-hmm. He is, he's allowing a couple Jedi masters on the Jedi council to think that they have fucking tricked him. Mm-hmm. But he's got the upper hand the entire time. Yeah. I love Cad Bane's character. I don't like how he didn't have holes in his cheeks. But yeah. uh, overall, this is a good third part to a three-part thing. Mm-hmm. I wasn't real pleased with the second part. Uh, however, uh, the interplay between the way that the last episode ended and this one began and the overall thing... I got to give this one a thumbs up. That means okay. for me, I am, I guess, three up. I thought I gave the last one a thumbs down. Hmm. No, I, you gave the last one a thumbs up. Yeah, I remember that. How about that? Yeah. Uh, so I'm, yeah. Th- I'm, three, I'm three for three on this one. I, I think I, I was went two for three. Up and then down, right? Is that what you, I did? You did? Up and down. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, for me, I agree with you. And yet my thumb is is down. Okay. Pretty much for the same reasons. Almost. Yeah. It's like I, I, I do like a lot of this episode. I do like how it flowed to most degrees. I, the, the reason my thumb is leaning down is that there is still from a story perspective, just a few missteps that happened that were big enough to just bother me you know to from saying like yes this is a good episode right Mm -hmm. so just the way that the episode started i think it started okay and then it kind of separated itself into like that plot a plot b thing that kind of 
happens. But yeah. I just it just kind of then it didn't hold together as well. I can totally agree with you because I I feel like the last handful of episodes were coming dangerously close to trying to cram too much stuff into these episodes. Mm-hmm. This this adventure of Cad Bane and like going to his asteroid M, you know, force base, whatever the fuck you want to call it, right? Mm-hmm. Is is nice. Uh, this other thing with like the, the kids, I feel like those are two separate things. I feel like the kids and the holocron are two separate stories. And I think that with the ambiguity of whatever the fucking cargo of doom was, I think we could have (laughs) restructured this three part story arc a little bit differently and, Mm. and came up with a, a better, outcome perhaps yes um i mean i gave it i gave it three thumbs up so overall i liked it right but where when we're looking at these episodes and and breaking them down we've had a handful in the past couple of months that that are dangerously close to just having like things put in because it's like oh wouldn't it be cool if we had uh if we had Mace Windu do this fucking awesome Indiana Jones, like roll under a door and then he's got to like yeah. use the force to get his lightsaber. So then we have to like concoct this scheme to fucking get him in the situation to, to, yeah, to pay like, off the thing. Right. Yeah, Like the, the, those moments aren't earned at all. Like they aren't earned. Mm-hmm. Right. Like they are ideas and then they structure things around the idea and you feel every sense of that. Right. And so, that's what I mean by just, the messy story structure that I can definitely see now mm-hmm. by no means do I think this is a bad episode, but I think if an episode is neither good nor bad, you know, like you have to earn being good and you have to earn that thumbs up. Does hey, that make I, sense? I totally feel. Yeah. yeah. Like I said, yeah. I'm, I was right yeah. there on the cusp and yeah, like, like overall, I think this, I, mm-hmm. from an entertainment standpoint of this episode, I think it was generally fine. Okay. You know, but I think if, if, needing to make judgment on it i'm just indifferent about this episode if anything right okay i will say that for this three-part story arc uh Mm -hmm. we get four thumbs up and two thumbs down so give it a watch yeah right yeah like i i you know like and and for these for this one especially i'm I'm, again glad we had the the split delineation you know Mm -hmm. um but like I think the last episode I had a lot of problems with this one. It's it's a fine it's fine it's fine you know, like I agree. Cad Cad is fun. Cad is a lot of fun. No, Cad uh, is fucking awesome. Yeah, Cad is awesome. You know, there's fun moments you, with you, Lara, and but again, like it's and then like but the you know it's it's the weird thing with the, the again that miss that weird characterization of Obi Wan fucking yelling at a mother a victimized mother like right like oh he like, uses the fucking force on her he's got to give her some force suggestion like his her kid just got fucking kidnapped and he's gonna just start yelling at her like it's her fucking fault like come on now uh, that brings me to a question yes uh, what do what happens to these two kids are they returned back to their family just to be reabducted by the jedi later or, I guess so. Yeah. Or or do they just stay at the Jedi Temple and then uh like they send No, I'm sure they're returned Boris back because you need... over there to be like, "Hey, it's cool. Like, we got them. Well, like the bad dudes didn't get them, but the good guys did." So, well, thumbs again, up. again cuz cuz you need like full permission before you, it's, the Jedi aren't just taking the children. Right? I call bullshit on that one. I think they are. <laughs> See, then that goes back to my thing earlier of how I'm feeling. Ver- the more I learn about how the Jedi work, the more uncomfortable I am with the idea of the Jedi in general. I, I think some of these kids are snuck away in the dark of night. But I don't disagree with you. That's why I brought it up earlier, why I really don't like anything about how this Jedi system works. So, But like I said, I think that uh, that overall the being chosen to be part of the Jedi is a thing of adoration. And again, 
I am fine with that, but you still need to have the parents be like, yes, that's cool. Take my children. Verbally, I heard that. Great. I will take your children. It's not like, yo, bitch, this is an honor. I'm taking your kid. Get the fuck out of here. Right? Like, Mm -hmm. that's, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's a, like, just to be like, hey, while the kids are here in Coruscant, we're just going to fucking keep them here in Coruscant. I'll just be like, no, go fuck yourself. Like, I told the first bitch who turned out to be a kidnapper, I don't care, kidnapper or not, I told him, Bola or Paul said I had fucking time, so I'm going to go play with this kid for a little bit longer. Well, and I think that's why they sacrificed Bolo Rapal. I think that, you know, maybe the Jedi could have fucking saved him. They're like, this dipshit keeps running around <laughs> being like, hey, we're going to kidnap your kid next year. Next year, yeah. Like, there's a there's so. a time bomb on how long you got with your kid, so have fun mm-hmm. with that. Yeah. Right. Yep. You so, know, so, anyways. Yeah. So, so, yeah. Any uh, Any other notes about this episode before we get on out of here? Nope. I didn't take any notes on on uh voice acting today which leads me to believe that uh no no there's nobody yeah. i needed to report no i'll i can double check that and, and look at it later it's basically uh, the same cast i believe it's like you know clones bane is still cory burton right mm-hmm. yep you know yeah it's kind of it's our general cast yeah yularen yoda windu yeah, I think there was a there was a female voice actor that I wanted to to note that did one or both of the um, the female Rodian mother and female robot yes, lady. Yes, I believe so. That would be Jamie La McMillan. That sounds correct. So I I got that one for you. Hey, thanks, buddy. Yep. Yep. So we I got think that's that all going. I got, man. Yeah. Uh, coming right. up, coming up next week, we've got an episode called Bounty Hunters. Uh, mm. So we've got a sizable time jump. We're going from season two, episode three, to season two, episode seventeen. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> I have to remember that. And then we're before I running... take notes on the wrong episode. Yeah, if you watch season two, episode four, you're going to be about a month ahead. Okay. So. Good to know. Okay. Yeah. Good chatting with you. Anything else? Anything else? That's all I got for now. Let's say right. thanks to Kevin and Lindsay, per usual. Yes. Kevin's on okay. Twitter at they call me K Dub. You can email Lindsay uh Strange, Strange. Fantasy Music at gmail dot com. Yep. Uh you can talk to up. us. Yep. yep. Hit me up on Twitter at Not the Nerds. Find Lorenzo on Facebook at Not the Nerds Podcast. Uh our email is nothingnerdspodcast at gmail.com. If you could do us an awesome favor and give us a review on iTunes, that would be awesome. Yeah. Uh, we're looking to to expand our our listenership a little bit and, and everything helps. So word of mouth. Yeah. Uh, and also just get a sense because Kevin and I are just talking to each other and we're just kind of doing what we what we do, you know. Mm-hmm. We have no sense of anything. You know, we, we go on our tangents, do whatever. Because also it's it's nice because this is kind of the one chance Kevin and I really do get to sit and talk to each other. You know? Yep. Like we text on a daily basis, but that's different than definitely just kind of sitting down and having a chat about uh, smushing quarters and <laughs> Pennies. other such things. Pennies, yeah, not quarters. So. <laughs> you got to go big, man. You got to go big. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But uh, but yeah, so that you know, that's that's definitely why these episodes have gotten longer as time has gone by. Mm-hmm. But because it's kind of like the one uh, really good chance where Kevin and I get to know random things about each other. <laughs> For um, sure. So yeah. Uh, Speaking of which, that yeah. uh, Captain Marvel trailer came out today, oh, so yeah. we need to talk about that. So, yep, Captain Marvel, and let's do a twofer with uh, Mary Poppins Returns. All right, man, that one got me more excited. Not gonna lie, Mary Poppins Returns. That's my uh, definitely uh, my one of the highly anticipated movies I got coming up for the year. It's and gonna be that between is that what and you uh, call a teaser. Yep. So we'll talk about those later. All right. Thank you, everybody. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thanks, nerds.